Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last video uh, we did some uh, cleanup on the mesh. We added in some more deformation bones for the neck, the spine, and the pelvis and toes. Uh, one thing that I uh, forgot to uh, do as part of the cleanup, so I'll just go over it real briefly right here, is so we have our deformation bones, and if you come over here to the uh, little bone icon, if you uh, scroll down um, to deform right here, you'll notice that this uh, little uh, check mark is checked on. Uh, basically what that means is uh, these bones are uh, deformed bones, and when we parent the, uh, the mesh to the armature with automatic weights, uh, each of these, uh, that's going to create a a group, a vertex group, for each bone that has this option checked on. Now, um, this option is checked on by default when you create new bones. So, um, and I neglected to uh, uh, talk about that when I first started making the rig. Excuse me. So, uh, as part of one of the so one of the things you want to do pretty much right out the gate because it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier is uh, when you come. Um, when you make bones that aren't going to deform, you want to make sure that that option is checked off. Now, unfortunately, even though uh, I still have X smear turned on, uh, this doesn't apply uh, the changes to the opposite uh, side of your mesh. Um, so that just makes it kind of annoying. But nonetheless, you want you want to make sure that for any bone that's not going to deform the mesh, you want to make sure that those are turned off. The deform is setting is turned off because it will create a bunch of problems for you in the future once you parent your mesh to your armature with automatic weights and you get weird stuff happening uh, with the deformations. Bones are kind of competing with each other uh, for um, you know dominance over their selected regions. All right. Anyway. Um, and be sure to make sure you go through uh, the mat, the armature bones twice, just to make sure you got them all. Um, I'm not going to do this uh, for every single bone in this video because that's going to be tedious. I'll do it off camera when I'm not recording, but just make sure that that's something you take care of um, when you're uh, work uh, when you first start, you know, rigging your characters. Anyway. Um, Let's go ahead and create a curve for our um, for our spine. Now there are several ways you can create a curve for your spine um, or for anything that's going to use an IK spline constraint. Uh, you can just go ahead and just create a uh, one of the default curves like a bezier or a path or um, anything like that. Um, and you, if we go into edit mode, you can see. Um, it's already set up for us, but what I like to do instead is I'm going to move my cursor um, uh, to the selected to this bone right here, and I'm going to add in a mesh, and I'm just going to add in a single vert. Now that might be I think that might be an option. Um, in your user preferences, uh, let's see. I think it might be under add mesh, arc mesh, add extra objects. Yeah, I think if I just uncheck that, yeah, it's uh, no longer uh, available. So where to go? So make sure add extra objects is checked on under your. Um, under your add-ons in your user preferences, under it's in you can find it in the add mesh section, um, and just save user settings. Anyway, so we have this single vert added um, right here. Now go ahead and go into edit mode, and uh, make sure you're in uh, vertex mode. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Tab. Uh, another way is just selecting the box right down here. And with snapping set to single vertex, go ahead and extrude that up to the top bone like that. Go into object mode. Let's go ahead and rename this object um, spine curve 01. And now, with that selected, uh, you can 
go ahead and go into let's see here we go um, if you have a dynamic spacebar enabled uh, go down here to object then go down to convert and we can see that the uh, keyboard shortcut for that is alt C so you can also just do alt C and convert uh, curve convert to curve from mesh so now this is a curve and you can um, verify that by coming over here to your uh, properties and seeing now we've got um, uh, curve data available so it's really cool um, so the thing you want to do with this is once you have the curve is go ahead and go into edit mode and right now it's just a regular boring curve uh, it, there's nothing really too special about this it might as well be just a, a vertex edge anyway select all your points so uh, you can yeah, select all your points so you um, can uh, make this change uh, open up your um, tools panel by hitting uh, T on your uh, keyboard go up to tools and set the spline type to bezier and set the curve set the handles to free so now when we grab this uh, one of these inner handles Uh, the curve acts like um, like a bezier now. You can also uh, set the handles to auto. It uh, does it does the same thing. Uh, I like I like keeping it on free though uh, because we can uh, do stuff like scale. Anyway, with that done, go ahead and with the top curve selected, hit Control H, and you want to hook it to a new object, and it automatically adds to an empty. And if we go into object mode and grab that, you can see now what that's doing. That vertex uh, point on our curve is is hooked to the empty, and we can move it all around, um, like so, um, with uh, no difficulty. Alright, so go ahead and select the curve again, select this point, hit Control H, and add another um, object, another empty. Uh, you don't have to worry about the names of these uh, two empties because we're not going to keep them. Uh, we're later going to repla replace the ho these as hooks uh, with our control with the control bones that we're going to use for the hips and the chest. Um, but one thing you can do right now just to make it a little easier on yourself is to go ahead and select these two and uh, individual origin points is still um, selected as the pivot just go ahead and scale them down just so they're not so in, not so much in the way right now and then hit control A and apply their scale You can see how this is. You can see how this is affecting the curve. We can we can move it. We can rotate it. We we can scale it up, and we get um, and it, we can change it based on that. Um, very cool. Uh, uh, very cool. All right. Um, go ahead and select the curve now, and. I don't know if this will affect it, but go ahead and control A and let's see. First, let's take a look at our transforms. So our scale is at one, our rotations are at zero, which is good. But you can see our location is at uh, Z uh, 7.12 and at Y negative 0.334. Um, now that's fine uh, for the most part. But uh, one thing I don't like about that is because it's n because the origin point is right here. If I were to do something like hit uh, Control Z uh, or not Control Z or Alt Alt G, which snaps things back to their origins, 
uh, you can see it snaps the uh, curve to, or at least the curve origin point uh, to the center. And if we go back here, we can see now the locations are zeroed out. I don't like doing that um, because I like having, if I want my object in a certain spot on the on in the scene, and I want to be able to, to if I want to Alt G it back to its to that location, I want that location to read as zero zero zero. That's how that's uh, you know I'm a student of Maya and that's how it's done in Maya. Is if you want an object say in the corner of your room and you want that to be its a point of origin, uh, there's a way you can apply that location so that when you hit zero 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 on in the data, it goes right back to the area. Now Blender for the longest time has not had an option to uh, uh, make this so, but thankfully in the recent updates they do. So when you hit Control A, hit uh, location to deltas. And you can see now that uh, now that curve is zeroed out, but it's still in the spot where it's supposed to be. Oh, I didn't hit the right one. There we go. Location to deltas. Very good. And yeah, we can we can do it for the empties as well. Okay. Um, making pretty good progress here next thing you want to do is what's the next thing you want to do okay with this bone selected go ahead and add in a spline IK alright and just go ahead and make the chain length 3 and then we want to select our spine curve. So now, when we move one of the empties, those bones move with it. Let me go ahead and bring back the deformation bones too, so you can see what's happening here. Very cool. We can scale it up which is pretty nice. Now for some reason it's affecting um, these bones as well and I really don't want that. Um, I th think the way to change that is to yeah you, you just you gotta turn off um, you gotta turn off a Y stretch. The problem with that is um, you know the, the spine does stretch a little bit um, so we want to have some stretching in there but I don't want the stretching to also affect um, these bones as well so I know there's a way to fix that. I think it's I think we gotta turn on maybe even divisions or something. Let me see if that. No, that doesn't help. Um, I think the answer lies in how this is parented. So if we make that unconnected, I think that should, no, that doesn't, mm. All right, I'm going to stop the recording real quick and go to my other rig that I use as an example, as a, uh, and figure out why this uh, stretching is occurring. So I will be right back in just a second. Okay guys, I figured it out. Um, I was checking on my other um, uh, character rig and uh, the reason why uh, we're getting this weird stretch right now um, as opposed to uh, on the upper bones is because uh, primarily has to do with the chest bone right here and its relation uh, to its relation to the um, 
to the uh, its parenting to uh, the bone right here. If we go ahead and we uh, remove the parent, you know, uh, excuse me, you can see now that there's no stretch going on, uh, but at the same time, uh, we no longer are able to move the chest along with the spine. Um, now there's several ways we can remedy this. Um, one one of the most easiest ways is to use a um, is to use a copy transform constraint, which we're going to get into when I start mate when we start working on the the control rig. And uh, basically, what that's going to do is we're going to um, we can go ahead and parent this back to the MCH spine. We can just we can make it. Oops, no, we don't want it. MCH <laughs> spine, MCH spine. There we go. Spine IK. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, basically, what well, in place of the empty, we'll have a uh, control bone uh, for the chest, and the chest will basically copy the transforms of the um, of the control bone. So um, and and every and also everything that is parented to that chest bone will also cop, uh, copy the transforms of that bone. Um, so we won't get this weird stretching that we're getting right now with with our top bones. Um, if you notice down here, nothing's happening here on the the pelvis bones because of um, because the hips isn't parented to the um, to these. It's going to be the other way around. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna be in a later video. Um, so as we stand right now, I don't know if there's anything left we need to do on the deform rig other than, as I said before, remove uh, unchecked deform on all the bones that aren't going to deform. So I think in the next video or the video after that, we're going to move on into uh, some actual, excuse me, uh, we're going to create the actual uh, control bones or a animation bones as they as as they are, and um, and then uh, once we, we get done with those, that's going to be really easy to do because all we're essentially going to be doing is just creating is duplicating the bones that we already have, and then uh, and then uh, unparenting them, separating them from this object, and making its own rig, and then we're just going to go in and add a bunch of constraints that are going to help us control the various bones that we have. Uh, so that's going to be the next the next video or the video after the next video. Um, and then from there we can actually uh, parent the mesh to uh, the armature with automatic weights and see how it and test it out and see how it's working. And uh, from that point on uh, we'll do stuff like shape keys for facial expressions and we'll, uh, that will be controlled by bones. And yeah, um, so uh, lots of good stuff uh, coming up in the future for this series. But anyway, uh, that's going to do it for now with, uh, for this video. Uh, thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.